Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can wait for multiple fetch requests to complete or doing something like rendering their content to the page. So in this example, I'm fetching three types of JSON data, posts, comments, and photos from this API that returns fictitious JSON data. So to handle requests together, the first thing that you want to do is to place all of the requests together in an array. So I'll just copy them in and also add a comma and remove the spacing. And now because each fetch request is a promise, we can pass this array of promises into a method that is available on the promise object that is promise.all. So I pass the array in here so you may be familiar with this object as a way of creating new promises by putting the new operator before it. Well, it also handles objects of the type it produces. So promises, if you put those in an array like we have done, and now you can access the result of these fetch requests in the same way that you would for a regular fetch request. So you usually access the response object by using the then method. And then in the function you pass into it, you have available to you as a parameter automatically, the response object. This time we're going to have an array of response objects. So if we take a look at what's been logged to the console, you see that we have an array that contains three response objects. And what we want to do for each of these response objects is read the body of each, the readable stream. That's going to give us the JSON data. So we can't just call res.json here because res is an array. And also something to know is that res.json returns a promise. So we need to wait for that just like we did the handling of the array. So again, we're going to use the promise.all trick here. And as you already saw, this expects an array. So what we're going to do is call res.map which will return an array of the return values of the function that we're passing in. So I'll call map. So what I'm going to return each time is the current item, which is a response object. And I'm calling JSON on each response object. So this returns a promise. So what we end up with as the return value of calling map on the response object array is an array of promises that are reading the readable stream on each response object and then promise to all we can access its result in the same way that we did before by calling dot then and then the result of it is going to be available as a parameter inside the function we pass into it and this time it's going to be the data itself so i'll just log that to the console and what we should have now is an array of JSON data. And for error handling, you can add a catch statement to the outer promise.all. So this is going to catch any errors, including in the inner promise.all. And I'll just log here a message to the console if it fails, saying multiple fetch fail. So as you saw, this solution is working. We are getting back the three bits of JSON data. But we do have the start of some annoying nesting going on here. So with the promise.all inside the promise.all method. So you can fix this by using async await syntax instead. So to start using await inside a function, you use async before it. So I'll just call this function main. So with the first promise.all, I can use await inside this function to await its result. And I'll save the result there as res. Then I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing as I was before with promise.all map. So again, I'm going to await promise.all and I save result that as data. And then I can log the data as the last thing that I'm doing inside this function. And of course, I also need to call the function and I'm going to comment out what we're doing here with the native promise syntax. Now to add error handling to this function, you can wrap everything that we were just doing inside a try block and then create a catch block for the error. 
So I'll sit here, console log. Okay, so if I test this now, we should still be getting back the same result as before with the three JSON data files. So we're getting the same result back, but now in the syntax, we are avoiding the nesting that we saw with the multiple promise to all methods. And we could go on here and await more promises and we wouldn't end up with any more nesting. So this solution will wait for all three of the fetch requests, but there is a behavior about promise to all that some people don't like, and it's to do with what happens when one of the fetch requests doesn't resolve, but it rejects. So what I'm going to do here is to create a promise that is going to reject immediately. So if we take a look at the result now, you see that we just get the error message. So even though the fetch request for posts and photos would probably resolve successfully because the second promise failed, the entire array of promises will not be consumed and we just get an error message. So some people refer to this as fail fast behavior. Sometimes it might be what you want, sometimes it might not be, and you'd still like to work with the promises that were successful. So it is possible to work with successful promises only. So there's another method on the promise object for this, and that's promise.allsettled. So I'm going to comment out what comes after it and console log the result that we get back from promise.allsettled because it's a little different from what we get back from promise.all. So what we have instead of an array of response objects is an array of objects with two values. Each one has status, letting us know whether the promise fulfilled or rejected. And if it fulfilled, a value property. If it rejected, a reason property, which sometimes gives us some more information about why it failed. In this case, the value is undefined because I just called promise.reject. So what I want to do here is convert this array of objects into an array of response objects like we had last time. So to extract these two response objects and to place them in an array. So to do that, I'm going to create a new array. So I'll call that success array. And I'm going to iterate through each one of those response objects in order to extract the data from it. And I'm going to be using the status property to determine whether a response object should end up in the array or whether it should be passed over. So I'm going to check here if the current object dot status property is equal to fulfilled, then I want to push the value property of that object into the success array. So for that, I can call push on the success array and I'm going to be pushing in object dot value. And now we can just basically follow the same steps as before. So I'll get rid of the console logs here. So I'm going to uncomment the code that we had before. The only difference is that the array of response objects is now not res. It's the success array that we created. So hopefully now we have two JSON data files coming back to us, which correspond to the two successful fetch requests. So sometimes you may prefer this behavior where you just want the data back that succeeded and for one fetch request not to throw an error that ends the entire process. So sometimes you may prefer this approach where you want to get back what succeeds and you don't want one failed fetch request to end the entire process, but you probably do want an error to be thrown if none of the fetch requests work. So at the moment, what if all three of the fetch requests fail? So I'll insert promise.reject in place of each of the fetch requests going to return an empty array. So to handle this, you can add an if statement, checking to see if the success array has a length of none, which means that none of the batch requests were successful, then throw a new error. And you could say something along the lines of fetch has failed. Then in the catch statement, so now that we're using promise to all settled, this catch block will only run if all three of the fetch requests fail. So what I'm going to do here is log the error 
that I entered before inside the if statement where I was checking the success array. And now you can see if all of the fetches fail, then it will help the error. If not, then as you saw before, you'll get back as an array, the JSON data for the fetch requests that were successful. And so that is it for this tutorial on how you can wait for multiple fetch requests to resolve before doing something. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.